Hey everybody and welcome to episode 326 of Unboxing Wednesdays for comics arriving in stores on Wednesday, January 25th, 2017. Yeah, man. Did you see that trailer for uh, Logan, the second one? Yeah, I did. Like it. It's pretty badass. I'm really excited about that yeah. book. I feel like they're really trying hard to do the rated R thing. I just like let's just swear whenever we want. Yeah, it's just like let's throw uh, let's throw Professor X or Jean Luc Picard, you know, in there and have him like drop some f bombs, yeah, right? Why not? Right? Yeah, but you know, it, it looks like it's going to be a really cool movie. I think it's going to do a lot of things for X23. She's already gaining a lot of. Uh, popularity in the comics world and I think this uh, this movie is gonna gonna make her even more popular maybe like kind of like a, a less funny hit girl type scenario you yeah, know yeah. more a more serious hit girl um, no but it looks awesome what else man what else you been up to it's chilling, man. <laughs> yeah, right cool <laughs> all right well uh, let's get to all the cool stuff that's coming out this week that you can chill with in your own home Ricky <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, let's get to this week's comics. Go ahead and open up some boxes. Uh, while Ricky is opening up those boxes, I just want to let you guys know about a few things that are going on here at Stadium Comics. First of all, this Saturday, we have our good friend Marvin Law is going to be in store uh, sketching and selling his artwork uh, to anybody who's able to come by that day. Uh, Marvin will be set up here in the shop. If you're looking for some awesome artwork or looking for a custom sketch of your favorite uh, pop, pop culture character come on by on that day and uh, have a chat with Marvin he'll uh, talk about his favorite wrestlers and uh, other cool things his favorite uh, martial arts movies and then he'll draw you something awesome um, also if you go over to stadiumcomics.com right now and uh, check out some of the stuff we have for pre-order. You'll be pretty uh, stoked at what's up there. We've got that upcoming Watchmen crossover event that's coming to the DC Universe, The Button, and it, uh, it, it happens in the pages of Batman and The Flash. DC announced that they're putting out uh, those cool lenticular 3D looking covers, um, and also the regular covers as well. So we've got collector's packs up for all of that right now. Pretty inexpensive, so head on over there and pre-order now. Uh, those books will be coming out in May, but we've got to get our orders in soon because of the special covers. Also, I know uh, I know Ricky's been looking forward to these, but Marvel announced uh, a new set of Venomized variants for a bunch of their ongoing titles. Uh, we don't have a pack up for that, Ricky, but you can go in and buy the individual issues that you want to grab. So um, if you want to grab all of the Venomized variants, the, the option is there for you. If you want to just grab certain titles or certain covers, that's uh, an option for you as well. So head on over to StadiumComics.com and then uh, on the right-hand side of the screen you'll see uh, the link for the Venomized variants. So check all that out. All right, moving on to the comics, we've got Rick and Morty issue number 22. Serenity, No Power in the Verse, issue number four. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, season 11, issue number three, hit shelves today. We've got a third printing of Mark Millar and Greg Capullo's uh, Reborn, issue number two. And a second printing of issue number three. And new on shelves today is issue number four, and there's a couple covers for you to choose from. From Joe Books, we have Pirates of the, of the Caribbean, issue number three. Grim Fairy Tales, number two. Because every thrash metal band needs its own comic book, we have Slayer, issue number one of three. Very bloody cover, too. Yes, Slayer does make an appearance in the book. My Little Pony, Friends Forever, issue number 36, has these two covers. And because every 70s rock band also needs its own comic book, we have Kiss the Demon, issue number one. From Black Mask, we have The Dregs, number one, a new series from them, and there, there are two covers to choose from there. Because every 80s movie antagonist needs their own comic book series, we have Biff to the Future, issue number one. Here's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number 66. Power Rangers Pink, issue number six of six. So this is the final issue in this miniseries. And Batman Ninja Turtles Adventures, issue number three. This is the regular cover, and here is the variant cover. A new one from Boom Studios, it is Lady Castle, issue number one of four. We've got Saga, issue number 42, and Frank Cho's Skyborn, issue number 3 of 5. Okay, moving on to Marvel, we have the Totally Awesome Hulk, issue number 15, Daredevil, number 16, 
Extraordinary X-Men number 18, Punisher number 8, Avengers number 1.MU, and the MU stands for Monsters Unleashed, Spider-Woman number 15, Thunderbolts number 9, Infamous Iron Man number 4, Black Panther number 10, Spider-Man Deadpool number 1MU, Ghost Rider number 3, Solo number 4, the Prowler, number 4. Carnage, number 16. Steve Rogers, Captain America, number 10. Doctor Strange, number 16. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, number 15. Civil War 2, The Oath. This is a one-shot tied into the Civil War event that just ended. Here we have the second issue in the Jennifer Walters chapter of The Hulk. Deadpool, number 25. This is a special issue that sees us return to the universe of Deadpool 2099. And here's the variant cover for that book. It's Inhumans versus X-Men number three. And here is the Terry Dodson variant cover. Then we have Star Wars number 27 with the special R2-D2 action figure variant. All right, moving on to DC Comics. This is a really cool one I want to share with you guys this week. It is issue number one of 12 of Commandy Challenge. Commandy, of course, was a classic DC Comics uh, character that uh, Jack Kirby uh, was heavily involved in and uh, this pays tribute to Jack Kirby's character uh, in the 100th uh, anniversary of his birth. So the cool thing about this book is um, DC is, is putting uh, writers and artists on this book and the first half of the book will be written uh, by one writer and they'll leave uh, the story at a cliffhanger uh, for the next writer um, in, in the same issue to continue and end that particular uh, single issue book. And then that story will then continue on with the other writer uh, and then that story will then continue on with another writer the next issue. So this is going to go on for 12 issues. It's going to be I guess 24 different writers over the 12 issues and each book will be split in half. So it'll start off with one writer's story and it'll end with another writer's story. Then in the letters column of the book the uh, writer of the first part will explain how they would have ended the story. So it's really kind of cool. If you're into the whole writing of comics thing, it might be a cool thing for you to pick up to see how different writers would interpret different stories. Um, so yeah, really a cool original idea with a classic Jack Kirby character. DC's Young Animal Line brings us Doom Patrol number 4. Here's Wonder Woman number 15. Hellblazer number 6. A prequel of sorts to uh, Wonder Woman. It is uh, Odyssey of the Amazons, issue number one of six. Batman Beyond, number four. Blue Beetle, number five. Batman 66 meets Wonder Woman 77, issue number one. Justice League vs. Suicide Squad, number six of six. Here's the regular cover. Here are the two alternate covers for that book. Action Comics, number 972. Teen Titans, number four. Deathstroke, number 11. Batgirl, number seven. The Flash, number 15. Here is the regular cover, and this is the variant. Teen Titans, number 4. Detective Comics, number 949. Killer Frost, Rebirth, the latest in the Justice League of America Rebirth one-shots. And then finally from DC today, we have Suicide Squad, issue number 10. Last week I asked you guys, surprise time, if you didn't know. Last week I asked you, uh what your favorite part about wrestling is. We got some awesome answers. Anthony Guya said, I always loved and enjoyed all the rumors running around uh, as classmates and friends talked about Kane and what he looked like behind the mask. Did he have a snake eye? Would you die just staring at it? Is he the devil? Oh man, how gullible we all were to be young again. Um, I really liked when he took off the mask and he used that machine to talk uh, and then it turned out that he didn't need it later on. Come on guys, consistency people. Uh, Joel and Stanley said my favorite moment was when Hulk Hogan turned evil and formed the NWO. I still buy all the NWO merch and wear it proudly, so Ricky, please put Kevin through a table. I do that all the time. That's how we close the store. Kevin through a table. Uh, Marcus Hanner said my favorite moment is The Undertaker. That's it, The Undertaker. I agree, man. I, I really think that wrestling nowadays is missing those awesome gimmicks. I remember as a kid, I used to think that The Undertaker was actually from hell. And I remember my brother talking to me, and he's like, look, if The Undertaker was actually from hell, why would he be in the WWF? Why wouldn't he be, like, taking over the world? I'd be like, man, you're right. So that just didn't make any sense to me as a kid. Didn't make any sense. 
And then that's when I realized that wrestling was fake. Biggie's comic said one of my favorite wrestling moments was when uh, Monday Night Nitro and Monday Night Raw were in a ratings war. Nitro would start an hour earlier than Raw and would give their viewers all the match results for that night, uh, for that night's Raw episode before it aired. LOL, low blow, WCW. How can they do that, man? I would have been so pissed if I was, if I was WWF. One Kid Posse said wrestlers with great names like Big John Studd, King Kong Bundy, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Hillbilly Jim, and Ricky the Dragon Lima. What? Uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat? Come on, guys. Let's, let's not use alternate facts here. Uh, are, he says that they are all part of great memories in the wrestling matches back in the WWF days. Great times. Great times. And the winner for this week will be going into the draw that will be happening in like five seconds. Goes to Logan Frews who says, Watching Stone Cold Steve Austin drive the huge Coors Light truck down to the ring and soak The Rock, Vince McMahon, and Shane McMahon from head to toe with beer spewing from a hose. A lot of life in the 90s. I remember that and that was pretty awesome. Uh, Coors Light must have loved that. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money for them. So congratulations, Logan Frews. You'll be entered into the draw right now. All right, so we got this sweet boxing. Look at this, it's champions themed. It's got champion stuff on it. It's got Viz. It's got this guy, was it Nova? That's right. So Logan Fruz, you're going in there. Uh, from, from, the, from the beginning of the month, we had Funk Off, who talked about um, how Iron Man should be a baboon. So he's going in there, Iron Baboon. And uh, we have Jason Todd, who talked about how Black Panther and Storm should be in a relationship together. How cute. Now, there's only three this month because I was away the first or the last weekend of December. So it's uh, more odds for you guys this time. But we also have a special guest to help out. Special guest, please. Would you mind coming? No. No? Yeah! It's Buns! Anyone remember Buns? Flavor? No one remembers me. Flavorful sauce, Nobody guys. Remembers. Guys, Buns? Da, 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 buns, da, da, who'd you da, pick? Da, da. Funk Off, who said, uh, tired, tired of his butt being exposed, there was only one thing this baboon could do. Iron Baboon. So congratulations, Funk Off. Buns has chose your name. Send us your information at info at comicboxer.com and we'll get the comic box or box out to you as soon as possible. All right, so this week's question is related to the Slayer comic. Which band would you like to see have a comic and what would that comic be about? I'd like to see a Justin Bieber comic and be about him using his powers of believing to solve world hunger and people's problems. So let us know in the comments what, uh, what band you'd like to see have a comic and what that comic would be about. Uh, well, Ricky, a, uh, a special thank you to our old friend Buns for joining us for that for that draw. Uh, it was good to see him again since the old uh, flavorful reviews days. Uh, what was that like? Twenty years ago? Yeah. yeah. It seems seems that long ago. Back in Vietnam. The technology used in those videos as well was about <laughs> twenty years behind. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially things like microphones taped to tripods and. Stuff like that. It was all uh, very. I believe it was elastic bands. High tech. Oh, elastic bands. My mistake. They didn't have tape invented <laughs> at, at that time. We didn't want the residue on the mic. Right. Okay? Right. On. Right. Very clean. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, good batch of comics out this week. I hope you guys all have an awesome week. You can connect with us on any of the websites you see listed here on the screen. We'll see you all next time for episode 327 of Unboxing Wednesdays. Take care and enjoy your comics this week.